In this episode, Perseverance finds lots of strange objects on the Martian surface, tastes its first rock from the Delta, and seems to have collected what looks like a cat hair. This video is part of a series documenting the Perseverance rover and Ingenuity helicopter every three months. The rover has made significant progress through Hawksbill Gap, covering nearly 400 meters or a quarter mile in a week. For the first time, the rover selected and analyzed two rock targets on its own, thanks to its autonomous software. Going forward, the team at NASA plans to utilize this software more frequently, ensuring the rover doesn't miss anything interesting along its path. For over four months, Perseverance has had an unexpected traveling companion, a rock that got stuck in its front left wheel. Covering more than 5.3 miles or 8.5 kilometers together, the rock has not caused any damage, but it appears it doesn't want to leave. While previous rovers have also had rocks hitch a ride, Perseverance's companion seems to be setting Mars hitchhiking record. On Sol 451, the rover looks toward the peak of the delta. The rocks in this area are of particular interest to scientists. Perseverance is desperate to use its drill. On Sol 452, the rover uses its rock abrasion tool to chip away at the surface level of a rock. The rover then uses its gaseous dust removal tool, essentially a compressed nitrogen can, which emits four short puffs to clear the cuttings and dust. After checking the tool for any damage, the team orders the rover to photograph the small hole. As the environment on Mars can change the surface layer of rocks over time, the rock abrasion tool is essential for helping geologists get a clear picture of what's hiding beneath the surface. You can see the wall of dust surrounding the target, thanks to the dust removal tool. While the fine-grained texture and pinkish color suggest the presence of hematite, the rock sank slightly upon abrasion meaning it's not suitable for drilling. This is very unfortunate as fine-grained material at the delta is one of the best chances of finding preserved microbial life. Meanwhile, scientists on Earth pour over mission data all the way back from Sol 148 and create this stunning animation. This was one of the windiest days the rover had encountered. It captured hundreds of dust devils. The scientists estimate that the rover comes into direct contact with four dust devils every single day, mainly around the Martian noontime. This is great news for our little helicopter friend, as it means the winds can potentially remove build-up dust from its solar panels, preventing future low-power scares. The helicopter celebrates with its 29th flight. Ingenuity is currently trying to catch up with Perseverance. This map shows the Delta, as well as a few notable locations. The plan is for both machines to head up a smooth channel to reach the top of the Delta. Perseverance is currently in a very promising location. At the Delta front, the rover is getting up close and personal, capturing some extraordinary images. This is by far the most exciting place Perseverance has investigated. The rocks here look very alien, almost like what you'd expect from another planet. We've been documenting the Mars rovers for many years, and we haven't seen rocks like these before. Look at the holes in this rock. Is it a product of the Martian wind eroding them over time? Or was water involved in the process? We won't know for certain until we get these samples back to Earth. On Sol 466, the rover captures something spectacular. It's a rock that looks like a snake's head. While the internet speculates on whether this was created by a lost society of Martian snakes, it's not the most interesting thing in the image. Look at this rock. It appears to be balancing on top of a larger rock. If it is, it's unlikely it was transported there by the Martian wind. Could water have been involved in the process? Or is it something else entirely? A well-aimed meteorite, for example. Or perhaps it was placed there by the Martian snake people. In reality, it's hard to tell if this is a rock balancing or just an extrusion of the rock itself, sticking up behind the main rock. As excitement grows around taking samples from the Delta, the team at NASA turns their attention to the bright material that Perseverance spotted back on Sol 411. 
This view from Saul 464 shows what appears to be a reflective piece of foil. This is likely a piece of debris left over from the landing, but there's a problem. The team confirms it's a piece of multi-layer insulation, likely from the sky crane which flew away from Perseverance's landing site after touchdown. However, the sky crane crash landed 2 kilometers or 1.2 miles to the southeast of this location. It's possible that the crash ejected some material into the sky, which then settled in this location. This image from Sol Zero shows the smoke plume that was generated as a result of the impact. Such forces could have theoretically ejected the material high up into the air where it was caught by the wind. However, NASA believes the material was likely just caught in the Martian wind after settling near the crash site. These two images, although taken from slightly different angles, show that the piece of debris is moving as a result of the wind. On Sol 472, the rover abrades another rock in preparation for its drill, again on fine-grained material. Unfortunately, the rock cracked and was pushed down into the surface, making it unsuitable for a drill attempt. While the team decides on which rocks to attempt next, Perseverance is ordered to take a highly detailed panorama. This panorama contains 2.5 billion pixels and now holds the record for the most detailed image taken on the surface of Mars, beating the Curiosity rover's record of 1.8 billion pixels. It highlights the delta front, from which the team hopes to collect core samples. On Sol 474, the team spots something in one of the images. They order Perseverance to go and have a closer look. The object's location is also moving, probably a result of the wind. It appears to be a string-like object, possibly yet another piece of spacecraft debris. Upon closer inspection, it's determined that the object is in fact spacecraft debris and is a piece of Dacron netting based on the observed 2 by 2 millimeter mesh pattern. It seems that this area is a natural resting point for wind-blown debris. The team at NASA isn't worried that all this debris could pose a threat to the integrity of the samples or endanger the rover in any way but these debris findings prompt them to think about the impact of future landings to better contain the debris field. On Sol 477, the rover comes across a rock which is nicknamed Betty's Rock. This rock would provide an incredible core sample, with the layers telling the story of the area's ancient past. Unfortunately, however, the jagged layers and awkward shape means the rover can't maneuver its arms safely near the rock. Perseverance takes lots of close-up images, but will have to keep persevering to get its first core sample from the Delta. A few sols later, the team identifies a suitable area for the use of the rover's drill. This rock, named Skinner's Ridge, allows Perseverance to get to its first core sample from the Delta, something that will be of incredible value when the sample return mission brings it back to Earth. The core measures 6.7 centimeters, or 2.6 inches long, making it the mission's longest core so far. The rock was softer than others previously cored, requiring only low levels of percussion, but wasn't as fine-grained as the earlier delta rocks that were abraded and then found unsuitable for drilling. After a successful coring campaign, a routine check on the rover's drill shows something odd. Images reveal two small pieces of debris, one on the coring bit in the bit carousel, and a hair-like object on the drill chuck. The team at NASA investigates the issue, taking multiple images from multiple angles. After moving the drill and testing that everything still works, they are confident to proceed with the mission. It's likely the hair-like object is a small piece of debris from the crash landing, as we've seen so much of it in this area. Luckily, it poses no threat for now. On Sol 518, the rover sits at a location known as Wildcat Ridge and is gearing up to collect another core sample. Skinner Ridge, the site of the rover's first sample from the Delta, can also be seen from here. The team at NASA now wants the rover to head to a location called Enchanted Lake. We'd like to say a big thank you to our patrons. You are helping us to keep this series going. If you enjoy this series, please consider joining the community. 
It really helps. Find the link to join the community below. Click here to see what the rover finds in the next episode. Thanks for watching Elder Fox. Remember to like, share, and subscribe.